is younger than him. That is still schooling. He's transferred the form that he showed in the heats into the semi-finals and into the final, and he's a body length clear almost. Can he hold on? We were hoping to see history in the pool, but we are history because Singapore has won an Olympic gold medal and an Olympic record time. It was just Joseph one of those schooling. moments where it was so surreal, Simply I couldn't believe it was happening. Singapore, For gold once it medal in the pool. A Singaporean can uh, be on the podium. And then I remember how there was actually a victory ceremony. He's had the potential. He's uh, around, he's around the island, he's simply telling ordinary Singaporeans for their support. Well, schooling is going to try to do his best to qualify into the semi-finals. He certainly does not look like he has the form of five years ago over there in lane number eight. It is I would say that you know, his performance over the last couple of years has been on a, the wrong trajectory. So, so it's like moving on a downward trend you know, rather than having you know, certain peaks. There's just no words to sum it up except disappointing. Um, if we decide then, nope, Joseph doesn't get a chance and he goes to NS. Then what does it say about us as a people also? What does it say about us as a, as a nation? I'm Imran and I'm 25 years old this year. And I remember telling my parents that I wanted to meet Joseph Schooling in action. That reflects how much myself as an ordinary Singaporean was to see Joseph Schooling emerging victorious at the 2016 Olympic Games. I'm Eugene Tan, uh, I'm 51 and I teach um, at a local university. I, I've always been concerned about, about national service um, and, and I knew that you know, with his performance in the Olympics, you know, the question of whether he will get a further deferment uh, will certainly arise. And, and, and knowing how the SAF works, uh, you know, his deferment was, was definitely would end at the end of the Olympics. Uh, so, so I felt that it was important to, uh, you know, to, to weigh in, uh, you know, while the, the, you know, while the issue is still, uh, in a way, relevant. Uh, you know, I, I know some people were, were a bit upset that, that, you know, before he could even recover from his poor showing, uh, you know, that I was talking about, about NS and, and, and whether he should be deferred or That's not. Time for all uh, but <laughs> I think it's the point because, because his deferment would have technically ended within two weeks of, of, of his swim in, in, in Tokyo. Hello, my name is Ryong. I'm a national track and field athlete and I run for Under Armour and Pokari Sweat. I wrote a, a, a sample program. You know, the, he, the guy gets up at like 7.30, he goes and trains for two hours and then he has breakfast and he's just in the office from like 10 o'clock to 3.30 or 4 o'clock. He goes for a short nap and then he comes back and does an evening session. I think it's doable. Hi, I'm Kenneth. I'm 36 and I am a communication specialist. I'm just a regular citizen, I'm not like a sports person, but I always ask myself, it's like, how much do we miss of Joseph Schooling if, let's say, he's not there for another few years? Not really much, right? What can one guy do in, uh, in NS, right? Versus what can he do if we give him another shot at the gold medal? I think that Joseph Schooling should serve a modified um, national service, especially since national service um, serves to be um, an equaliser in a divided society. We can also draw inspiration from South Korea in the sense that when um, any of their athletes actually achieve a medal at the Olympic Games or the Asian Games, they would then serve a modified national service. They only need to serve four weeks of national service. I, I take a different view from, from Imran. Uh, I, I, I don't think uh, Joseph Schooling should be given special treatment uh, for his national service. It is important to recognize that um, Singapore having a, a conscript army, uh, then the, the principles of equity uh, and universality, by that meaning, you know, everyone goes through the same sort of uh, training and all, no one gets special treatment regardless of who you are. Uh, I think that's important to ensure that uh, national service continues to draw its support from, from Singaporeans uh, and, and I feel that once you start to make exceptions, um, I think that's when uh, national service could become undone. And of course, we also recognize at this point in time, only 
sports. You know, so what if I'm a brilliant musician? What if I am a good esports player? Uh, what what if I a, a good um, I, I I set up a, a a company which is a unicorn? I would say that we already have exceptions being made different one time, so you compete in Rio. You compete different one more time, so you could compete in twenty twenty Tokyo. And when the Olympics got postponed by a year, he got a one year extra deferment. I mean, without this, this special treatment, there's no way he would have won in Rio. And unfortunately, it didn't pay off in Tokyo. But, but you know, it doesn't mean that. When someone doesn't win a medal, we shut down this opportunity. Right? It's like if someone gets a medal, we continue supporting them. We don't get a medal, we don't support them. Then it becomes a very transactional relationship. My opinion is that um, we should make a decision based on like the long term effects or the long term uh, gains that we can have as a country. And coming from someone who has served, uh, I personally don't want him to go through what I had gone through. Because that would be really rough on his body, and then that would be <laughs> not very good for because I was an infantry man, right? So I know, right? So that would not be good for his body at all, and that would not be good for our chances of like Olympic gold. Uh, uh, but I also have to to say that going into NS and having a modified program, obviously, is not the same kind of chongsua that you and I may have gone through. You know, sometimes we go to the jungle and it's like you know. One week, two weeks, you're eating like army food, you're not sleeping more than like three, four hours a day. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. shower. It's a kind of thing. obviously that's gonna take a toll on the body. I mean I took a while to recover from that after the army before I could like run at my best again. So if Joseph goes through a normal national service, I think we can pretty much kiss goodbye to him being at the next Olympics. I don't think he will even qualify if he had to serve like two years starting now. Um, I suppose the the, the chat the difficulty that complicates Joseph's um, uh, quest for another long-term deferment uh, is his Tokyo Olympics performance, right? Yes. Where, where he was really way off, you know, he didn't even make it for the, to the semi-finals in his pet event. And as someone who, who, who swam previously, although not at the level as Joseph did, um, I would say that, you know, his performance over the last couple of years has been uh, perhaps on, 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 on a, the wrong trajectory, right? You know, so, so it's like, you know, moving on a downward trend, you know, rather than having you know, certain peaks. You know. Subsequently, someone will also say, well, you know, if you could make that exception for Joseph, you know, uh, why not me? Um, and, 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 and that's where I think the point about the need to be transactional, harsh as it, it may sound, uh, I think it has to be. I think Eugene, Eugene is great for this discussion because you're not shying away from, you know, like, talking about some of the hard facts. I think you did it in a very nice manner. If I may be a bit more blunt, I think people underestimate what happens after that, you know. I think Joseph admits he, he just wanted to have fun, you know, after, after the Rio Olympics. And you know, who can blame the guy? 21 years old, you're the Olympic champion. That's something that people train their whole lives for, you know. Like, I, I've been in my sport for 18 years and I've not been anywhere close to the Olympics, never mind Olympic, Olympic gold. My, my, my best accomplishment was Sea Games gold and I was super happy about that. And I only did it at 25, 20, 23. So to be a Olympic champion at 21 is like something that is it's just, it's just mind blowing. And suddenly, what's your motivation to go for training? Like, it's easy to say, like, your motivation should be to defend your title. But the next Olympics is four years away. And he just went through, like, years away from his family, like, day after day of like, hard swimming and training. And... I think setting that aside, like, setting the past performance aside, right? Like, it's what Rayong said about, like, giving him a, even a shot at this is, I don't think, if you think about what it means for the individual versus what it means for the country, I don't think it's heavier for the individual. I think it's heavier for the country, right? It's, it's also a matter of national interest in that sense, right? Winning a goal in the Olympics puts Singapore on the map. Just like we sacrifice so many other things to put Singapore on the map. We shut down our streets for F1. For what? Is to have some kind of uh, event that puts Singapore on the map. If we decide then, nope, Joseph doesn't get a chance and he goes to NS, then what does it say about us as a people also? What does it say about us as a, as a nation? For myself, like, like national service is always associated with like military capabilities and capacities. 
As in, as much as we would like to broaden the definition and understanding of national service, we should also look at how other countries interpret national service, such as South Korea and Israel, and their definition of national service is always associated with military capabilities and capacities. If let's say we were to broaden the definition of national service, it actually opens up a bag of worms in that someone competing in esports and doing very well, and then let's say someone who's running a very successful startup. There's so many individuals out there who can say that this is my way of uh, contributing to the country and he creates so much complications in that sense that the, the authorities themselves, I think they, they might encounter difficulties in terms of standardizing what does national service actually entail. I think entrepreneurship, like to, to talk about your point, I think entrepreneurship or being like a e, like world's best e-sports player, a lot of it has got to do with the self. Like wanting to elevate yourself and like uh, self gain personal gain. A lot of what we are talking about as a national service is not about self gain. So I think there is a difference between earning something for yourself versus doing something in service for others. If you serve in the military or you or you go overseas and start building wells and houses and homes, none of this is for yourself. I agree, Imran. Sometimes it might be useful to to keep you know national service you know to to very defined areas and so, so, so they relate to national defense you know, which is the armed forces or whether they relate to to civil defense right? so, so that, that's where the SCDF comes in and then public order you know, which is where the, the police force comes in I think once we start to say okay you, know, you can serve as a musician you can serve um, you know as, as a peace corps volunteer um, you know, then I think it dilutes you know I think, national service is. I think one is not the same as the other. Like serving as a musician versus serving as a Peace Corps or volunteer might be very different and may not be part of the definition that we're talking about. So if you're talking about like a you're a musician, you're you're an esports person, you it's a completely different situation from uh, doing something again that serves other people. I, I suppose here you know we need to again focus on what national service is about, right? And and what really are you know in the national interest. And again, I'm not so sure, you know, whether a Peace Corps, you know, would be in the same category of national interest. But I think we're talking about uh, national service, right? In which uh, able-bodied men uh, and maybe in time women, uh, you know, put aside two years of their life. And in, in fact, longer, right? you talk about being operationally ready, ready uh, you know, in the service of the country. Most of us, if not all of us, right, we don't get to choose when we want to do NS. Mm. I mean, if we start to say that, okay, you can start, you can decide when you want to do NS, then I think the whole system, um, you know, would, would break down, right? So, so then, then we have the difficulty again of, you know, what is it that would merit, you know, exemption or, or, or or special uh, modified sort of NS. But just that I, I, I don't think, based on the performance, you know, another long term deferment is, is justified. I don't think winning a gold medal counts as NS. I mean, honestly, unfortunately for Joseph, I don't think so. But I do think that um, there is space for him to win another gold medal. And I think that might be a better way forward than. Saying, what do you mean, infantry man? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As an infantry man, or as like a, eventually become a store man, mm-hmm. you know, how much will they miss me if I'm not there? Not much. And like, that's, to me, that's more my question. But imagine if, if, if the one, mil- one in one million men who have served national service would think that way, right? You know, then, yeah. you know, we are going to miss. But they are, People, you know, but they are, not, and not they are not, and will never have the potential to win a gold, gold Olympic gold medal, and that's the difference between us and Joseph. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I guess it comes down to how you define like what what is good considered good enough. It's not that I want to sound unpatriotic, but I don't do what I do because of Singapore. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I got into the sport not because of Singapore. I didn't go into the sport saying like, oh, I want to serve my country. That's why I show up for training every day. No, like, no, I, eventually when I was good enough to represent Singapore, I was of course happy and you know I felt proud to wear the Singapore flag on my 
on my over my heart and compete for Singapore. And of course, I was very, very happy to bring joy to Singaporeans. But at, at the end of the day, it's a byproduct of uh, why I run. Eventually, Olympic champion who benefits the most from it is Joseph. What? It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not Singapore. Um, that's on his resume. He's internationally acclaimed. He can probably use it to apply for a job anywhere in the world. Olympic champion. That being said, I'm sure Singaporeans really enjoyed that. And you know, pride is a big form of national identity. Sports is a great way to foster national identity. So, you know, national policy wise, maybe we should take into account these things. Uh, uh, but I also have to, to say that going into NS and having a modified program might actually help him a, a little bit more than, than people think uh, it will hurt him. If he could have that bit of regimentation, discipline, keep him accountable, make sure he shows up for practice like four hours a day, eats, eats the right stuff, goes to bed early. And... I really believe that there's a need in terms of striking a balance in ensuring that he serves NS and ensuring that he is well prepared for the Olympic Games. Well, I, I, I think I agree with Imran. I, I think it's important uh, you know, for, for Joseph to, to serve national service. And I, and I think he will, right? Uh, I, I don't think it's a question of you know, or whether he should serve or not. I think if you ask most Singaporeans, they say he will have to serve. The question is when and how. Uh, and, and that's where I think many people would have you know, a, a wide variety of views as, you know, as even among the four of us, you know, there's, there's a wide variety of views. And, and I think I really want him to succeed because I think it, it will demonstrate that uh, you know, it is possible um, you know, to combine national service uh, and, 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 and sports, uh, you know, particularly when you have done you know, your foundation you know, over the last eight years. Uh, you know, and it's possible to build on that. So uh, fingers crossed, you know, I, I, I think we all want uh, you know, Joseph to, to succeed. Um, if I was Joseph himself, I also get kind of sick after a while of everyone asking me, have you served your NS or not? Have you served your NS or not? Like, why not? Why not you going to NS? <laughs> so, at some point, I'm sure it starts to irritate the heck out of um, me. And if I could find a way to serve national service while competing, I would jump at the chance too. If one of the authorities is watching this and you're making a decision, it's something that's within, <laughs> within reason and something that you know we can all cheer for. And you know, the best scenario would be you know, Joseph swims well next year as a Singapore Army like um, pers uh, personnel, and we cheer not just for Joseph winning a medal, but also for the Singapore Army and uh, allowing this such a situation to happen. That will be a win-win situation for all of us. So hearing what everyone say, right, it looks like it's going to be a really rough year for Joseph schooling. <laughs> but um, I do think and I do agree that some form of modified NS is necessary for Joseph and might actually, after Rayong mentioned, right, it might actually be beneficial to him and get him into a, a you know, a regimen, a schedule, a program that he can, he can um, excel at. A false training camp. Yeah, <laughs> like a false training camp. And like, I, I'm really like, I hope that Joseph will, you know, come back stronger and win something. Yeah. Thank you. Congrats. I don't know how you're going to edit it to five minutes. <laughs> <laughs>